Yo team, it's the exam coach checking in with you. When it comes to exams, what most people think about straight away is you've got to have the brains to deliver the information the examiner wants to see. And this is true, but I wouldn't say it's the start point for achieving your exam goals. The thing that needs to be right before anything else is your mindset. It's the start point from which all of our thoughts and actions come about. So here are five mindsets you need to know about before you take your exams. Mindset number one, the growth mindset. This is the foundation to all the mindsets we're gonna list today. The term growth mindset has been popularized by the social psychologist, Carol Dweck. She studies how we view ourselves and the consequences of thinking that our intelligence or personality is something we can develop, as opposed to something that is a fixed, deep-seated trait that we cannot change. Basically, she argues people who adopt a growth mindset and believe intelligence can be developed will reach higher and higher levels of achievement over time. Whereas people who believe intelligence is static or fixed will want to confirm and protect their intelligence by avoiding the failure, challenge, and effort that is required to grow. The end result is they plateau early and they don't achieve their full potential. I'm with Carol on this one. My message to you is take on challenges, persist in the face of setbacks, see effort as necessary on the path to achievement, accept criticism as an opportunity to learn and look for other people that you can emulate. Once you adopt the growth mindset, it doesn't matter where you're starting from. The only way you're gonna go is up. This mindset is also awesome because it can be applied to anything. Your personality, your behavior, your energy, whatever you want, even as we've talked about, your exams. I had a lot of negative feedback about my behavior when I was younger, and yeah, for a while, I maybe just thought that's who I was. I was the kid who was unfocused, messed around, unable to fulfill or recognize his potential. I didn't know it at the time, but looking back on it now, a key part of the change I made was adopting the growth mindset as an approach to everything I did. I'm telling you that you're in control. You can turn it around no matter what it is. The second exam mindset you need to know about is self-awareness. Being self-aware when it comes to exams means knowing yourself and having an honest appreciation of what you do and what you don't know and being okay with it. Then you put that growth mindset to work and dominate the exam. So many students skip this step of really looking at what they're doing, how they're doing it, and the results it's producing. I get it, we're afraid of looking dumb, confronting tough challenges, or we just never find the time to properly check in with our progress. Before we know it, it's exam time. But we've gotta make the time for this as much as we need to. The best thing about it is it's all happening inside here. No one needs to know about it apart from you. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's just you identifying how you're gonna hit your goals and then taking the daily steps to hit them. Here's a great quote that sums this up. Students are rewarded in public for what they practice in private. Take the time to reflect on what you're doing and how you could improve. The third exam mindset you need to know about is pulling from both directions. So before you ask, what the hell is that? I learned this one from my former boss, Gary Vaynerchuk. And I'm starting to find a little clarity starting to understand why this thing is so hard. This game of entrepreneurship, shit, this game of life. It's because the real answer is really found when you're pulling from opposite directions. I'm sitting here late and saying, why, why? I interpreted this as adopting two contradicting mindsets, which are both true because it will actually help you move forward to achieve your goals. For example, let's think about this within the context of exams. Understanding that exams, on the one hand, are important and they can open up a hell of a lot of opportunity. Pulling from the other direction, they don't matter because they aren't the only factor that decides your future and they certainly don't determine who you are or your self-worth. For me, exams mattered hugely and they were a big opportunity but they also didn't matter at all because I knew there were many different routes to get to where I wanted to end up. This will give you the peace of mind to avoid unnecessary exam stress because you know, whatever happens, things are gonna be okay and you'll find a way to keep moving forward. The fourth exam mindset you need to know about is seeing your time and attention as having real value. Every second of every day is worth something. Your time and attention is more valuable than you think. Don't believe me? Some of the wealthiest companies in the world think any social media company out there, let's take Facebook, they monetize your time and attention as their core business product. Think about how they actually make their money. They sell your time and attention to companies wanting to advertise 
to you. And yeah, because they package it up in smart ways and at scale, it means it sells for millions. Treat your time and attention like they do. Understand its value and spend it wisely. Whether this is having the perspective to stop watching endless video after video on YouTube or making one less tap or scroll per day on Insta or Snapchat, it all adds up. Side note, the algorithms on most of these platforms will continue to serve you what it guesses you will be most likely to watch for the longest amount of time or engage with the most. Actually, it's not guessing. It's coming to a decision based on the viewing habits of you and millions of other users like you, which probably actually almost definitely means it knows what you want to watch better than you do. Hey, I know it does for me, and just acknowledging this is the first step in being able to take back control and actually being able to tune out. When you realize how massively the odds are stacked against you whilst using these platforms, you start to make some better decisions about how you're spending your time and where you're spending it. Okay, last point about investing your time and attention wisely. I do go on a bit of a mad one when I talk about this subject. Let's look at time more specific to taking an exam. You only get a set amount of time to show what you know in the exam room, and you should absolutely be taking full advantage of all of this time. No leaving early, no matter what, doesn't matter. You sit there, you can't get that time back. So use it to ensure you've done everything you can to get the best grade possible. The fifth and final mindset you need to know about for your exams is, we are what we repeatedly do. Aristotle said that, not the exam catch. I don't know if he was writing some general philosophy there that would be carried down the ages through time, or if he was just writing about the exam catch way. I'm guessing it was about exams. Anyway, he's nailed it because exams are all about consistency over an extended period of time. Your results will be a product of all the tiny little decisions you make day after day. And look, I'm talking here as if this is really easy. It's not, it's tough. I regularly get caught out on doing what I know I shouldn't be doing if I want to make progress and hit my targets. When we're given the choice between another gaming session, a few more taps on Snapchat, or a couple more scrolls for the latest gossip on Insta, versus doing what we don't necessarily want to do in the moment, but we know long term we really need to be doing that. I'm thinking about revision, making notes, getting outside, hitting the gym. It's tough to check your impulsive reactions and get some perspective. Pause. Notice what you're doing. Half the time, I wasn't even noticing it. I didn't even realize I had a decision to make. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever opened up your smartphone and 10 minutes later, you're on a social network and you don't actually know how you got there? You can't recall it. And you can't recall what you actually came to do on that social network either. That red notification button, it somehow got you to subconsciously act. I know you have, it happens to us all. So by pausing, and being a little more conscious of our thoughts and actions, we can give ourselves a little bit more time to make a better decision. The next step is to ask yourself a simple question. What would fill in the blank do? Where I've left fill in the blank, you need to plug in the name of one of your role models. It can be anyone. For me, I like to use Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He inspires the living daylights out of me. He's always crushing it, getting stuff done, being positive and making the right split decisions on a day-to-day -day basis. What can I say? I want to be like Dwayne Johnson. It then becomes way easier for me to make a better decision. It, try it out. It might be a bit cheesy, but it sure does work for me. Okay, guys, if you found this video useful, give it a big thumbs up. Any questions, crack them in the comments. And remember, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. Focus. I'm checking out.